hello and welcome to another episode of the open book besties i'm misty walker and i'm Kay webster and today we are going to talk about what you gain when your book is a flop right and we have had i mean everybody's been there whether it's your first book or your afraid your very first book is going to flop or if you've written and published a bunch of books like us and you have some books that do really well and then some that just you know peter out and yeah. you're like I don't understand you know um you you're gaining something from this even if it's not money right right, right. so there we're, we've got some like things that we came up with that will help you understand that it's, it's all part of the big picture and, you know, the little building blocks of your ultimate success and the long game, not just the short game game. So, um, we will be going through those. That's what our show is going to be about. So, yeah. yeah. So you probably don't remember your first book, what, how it did, but I remember how my first book did. Um, I think I had like 32 pre-orders most of them were like family and friends <laughs> and I nowhere near made the amount of money to pay for what I put into it mm -hmm. and that was very discouraging mm -hmm. very discouraging especially when my second book only got 16 pre-orders mm -hmm. but my second book conversion is one of my top selling books now Right. Yeah. So just because your book launch didn't do, you know, you didn't, you know, hit top 100 on Amazon and, you know, made the New York today or whatever, one of those lists, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And just because you didn't do all of those things and make a bazillion dollars doesn't mean that that book isn't going to do wonderful later on down the road or consistently sell you 13 copies every single month or every week or whatever from now until the day you die or whatever you know so it's it's the long yeah because when you first start out you're you're building your brand mm -hmm. you're finding your readership mm -hmm. um and all of those things take time not for everybody because of course there are those unicorn authors that just pop out of nowhere and make a bazillion dollars but for the most of us the majority of us it's going to take a little time and it gets it's discouraging when you put so much work and so much effort into publishing a book and it doesn't perform the way that you would like or you expected right right so um one of the things that you you touched on readership and i do remember one of my very first well my first published book was broken and that's where I met my friend Elizabeth, who now beta reads for me. And she's been my friend. Me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's amazing. Yeah, she's read every single thing that I have written. And, you know, way back when she, you know, read my book randomly because she got it free in a um, takeover party thing. Yeah. And she read it and she was like, oh, I love that book so much, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I met, you know, that's the one reader that stuck out in my mind out of all the people that was the one that stuck out in my head because then she showed up for the next book and then she showed up for the next book and then she showed up, you know, 130 plus more times. And so it, that right there, like I made a, a reader for life, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that one just sticks out in my head, but then the next launch, maybe I got two or three or four more readers like her. And then fast forward eight years, you know, and it just multiplies and grows. So you really are finding those readers who really connect to your writing specifically. And even if you aren't, you know, someone who gets on, I mean, it's rare that you or I even get near the top 100, but it doesn't mean that we don't have like super loyal, you know, readers and um, people who really connect to our writing. And I have some readers like that, like or you have some readers that totally connect to your writing, but they don't connect to mine or whatever, you know, and I've noticed this with like co writing like people have different styles and flares and so um, you are developing this own special unique little group of people that enjoy your 
your voice, you know, and who you are mm-hmm. and the stories you deliver. And um, that's, yeah, sure. You didn't make all this money, but you did make something of value and you're going to take it. It will help you in the future. Right. Right. And so that's something to um, keep in mind. And um, another thing that we um, kind of mentioned was another um, good thing about a bad launch or whatever is with every book that you launch, you're you're um, building on your craft. So you're like learning like, okay, you went through the whole process. You went, you know, you thought up the story, you outlined the story, you wrote the story, you um, fixed the story, you had beta readers look at the story, then you fix the story some more, then you had your editor read the story, and then you fix the story some more, and then you proofed the story. And then, you know, you hired out or did your own cover or you know, you had it formatted and there was all the little things that needed to go in with that. And then you had to fumble your way through publishing it onto all the different platforms. And that was confusing. And then you were trying to figure out ads. And then you were also trying to do a newsletter. And then you were also trying to connect with hopeful would-be readers and trying to do all these things. And then, you know, like you said, you, you sold, you had 29 pre-orders or whatever, and you're like, oh my gosh. And, but you were learning things all that time. So now when you get ready to do the next book, you think, okay, well, I remember that I used this one word way too many times. So when you're writing the book, you're trying to eliminate that word. And um, your beta reader said that your heroine cries too much. So you're keeping in mind in the next book to lay off the tears, <laughs> you know, and then just like all the things. And, you know, I, I went through this cover designer and we didn't really gel. So I've been looking at pre-mades in this group and I think I'm going to go that direction or maybe I'm going to try my hand at making it myself or whatever. And so you're like learning things along the way. Um, And so then the next launch, maybe it doesn't do as well or the same, but you've gone into it with more knowledge and now you can take everything that you learn and go back to that first book and try to tweak at it, make it better or whatever you want to do to try to get that book out into readers hands so just because you had a release doesn't mean the book is dead in the water it's going to continue being out there waiting for people to read it and there are people that will love your book they just haven't found it yet so right um it's it's definitely you're practicing and you're learning and you're getting better um and some people who like will read reviews and stuff will be like oh you know I read reviews because it helps me get better well I don't read reviews to help me get better but I have other things that I do to help me get better like you know repetition doing it over and over and over again and um you know it just it, it's just a learning experience for everybody so yeah I I sometimes read reviews but it's not often and but I do get feedback from my editor every time Mm -hmm. and I'm learning new things every time that I get that feedback and each book is better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say too, that you don't, you find your people, you know, you don't, it's not just about readers. It's finding people that, um, that you connect with professionally you know, finding other authors, connecting that way. Um, It's important to find authors to connect with that write your particular type of books um, so that you can co-mark, you know, market each other's stuff. And and I think that that's really, really, really important. Yeah, you're, you're basically learning how to network with people in your field, your peers, and um, you, even though, you know, you, you write motorcycle romances and I write motorcycle romances, I don't see you as competition because, no. mm-hmm. you know, there's only my, I, only they can read my books or whatever. It's like, okay, well, you, you know, how can we work together to, you know, sell both of our books, you know, I mean, like right. there's opportunities, like, so maybe you do a, I mean, we've done this kind of thing before, do a paperback giveaway of one of yours and one of mine or whatever. And you're, you know, like you said, networking and connecting with people and making those relationships on the professional level too, not just your readers. Um, 
so where the readers are showing up every time once you find those readers and they're buying and they're your loyal readership you've also got people who are showing up every time with the support you know and you know I went to a networking group one time and they said it really well they said um, you should go to a networking group not thinking what can these people do for me but what can I do for these people so if you go into that with making connections with other authors, you, you if you go into it thinking, well, I need you to share my stuff. Can you put my stuff in this newsletter? Da, 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 da. If you go in with that mentality, it's very me, me, me. And um, you're not you're not looking people at can it since that right, they can. And they're, they're they might help because you get a lot of nice people like me. People ask me to do that kind of stuff all the time. And I do help. Um, but it, it all it always makes me think you know, okay, what am I chopped liver? You only, you only ring my inbox when you want me to share something of yours, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd, I'd much rather um, you try to connect, you know, even if, in, in, as a new author, it could be something as simple as reaching out to someone that is in your similar area or whatever and saying a very specific question, not like, how do I become a bestseller in this or something like that? But like, you know, do you think I should do this or that or or just something, just something to connect with them? So that way you've opened up a conversation and it's, you know, more of a mentor mentee type role. And, and then people naturally want to help, you know, at that point. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, yeah, okay, this is interesting. Let me, let's, let's converse about this. And then, um, and then when you go, okay, you know, I've got this thing coming up, or if, if you share it on your feed, that person nine times out of 10 is going to see that and go, Oh, I want to share that person. You know, I know her, I just talked to her in in the inbox or whatever. So um, I think it's being a little bit more uh, savvy with how you deal with that. And pay attention to who's helping you, who's sharing your stuff, who's, you know, talking about your releases, pay attention to those people and do something for them. Right, right. Yeah. Just even if it's a, I mean, I'll, I'll see that too, where someone will share my stuff and I'll think, you know, that person always shares my stuff. Like a, for an example would be um, Mar- Marley Valentine. Mm-hmm. I kept seeing her sharing my stuff and I was like, that girl's so nice. She always shares my stuff. And, and I thought to myself, you know what? I want to do something nice for her because she always shares my stuff. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go read one of her books. So I got her book and I read it and I loved it. And I was like, where has she been my whole life? Well, she's literally been right here in front of my face. And I've just yeah. been busy doing all the things. And then I was like, okay, now how can I help her? Because, you know, I just, I really want to help her because she's a good person and she's so supportive and she has really good books. And so, I mean, it's just that simple. Um, people see that and then they want to reciprocate, you know, naturally. Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not a, you know, get like here, I did this. Now you need to do this, you know? And that's, I don't know. I feel like that more natural stuff is received by the readers too better Yeah. instead of just a strict newsletter swap. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. or I, you know, I, I get friend requests, like I'm sure you do all the time from authors. And the second I hit that accept friend, they're in my inbox asking me for something. Mm-hmm. And that drives me absolutely wild. Like, I don't know this person. I've never spoken to them before. Mm-hmm. I, they, all I did was accept a friend request because 500 of my friends are friends with her. Right. And that kind of thing, I would strongly discourage you from doing. <laughs> right, right. Because even if you did that to, you know, a thousand people and five people took you up on it and you're like, oh, I got this, you might have you know, got rid of 995 people that, whereas had you gone and done, you know, 10 people and really put forth an effort to get to know them first or whatever, probably could have had 10 people help you, you know what I'm saying? Rather than just 5,000. Yeah. And not pissed off 995 more. (laughs) They do talk, talk, you know, like someone treats me icky then I tell you, Misty, you know, and, and we're very close. We don't blab our secrets. We're, we're, I mean, we just keep them to each other, but it's like, you know, I tell you like that, that made me feel icky, you know, like people talk to each other and then. And then when you do that, I'm like, that person's dead to me. <laughs> right. And then, yeah. And then if something comes up, you're more likely to go, mm, 
or, you know, like yeah. about this, you know? And so yeah. it's just, I know some people get so, um, um, like hell bent on, I've got to get down this list and I've got to get all these people and I've got to ask them all. And cause if you don't ask, you don't receive and you know, all this stuff, but I think it's much bigger than that. And you know, people crave that relationship. They want to have meaningful relationships. Yeah. You know? And it, 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 there's been people that I don't know that come into my inbox and have been like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. And just start talking to me about whatever. And I'm like, okay, I don't have, I don't have time for this person, you know? And then I kind of just give them the, you know, the quick, the quick Christy answer, like, LOL, or, you know, thanks or whatever. But then they come back in with something else. And, and eventually I warm up to them because, Mm -hmm. you know, they're not just asking me for something. They're genuinely just being nice and friendly or silly or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, ha, ha, you know, and then I start to remember them. And then I start to see them on social media and I'm like, oh, that's her book. I better share that because, you know, we talk to my friend, you know, Mm -hmm. and then, and so like, I, there's a girl right now, I won't say her name, but she's, that kind of happened. She just kept coming up to me and talking to me and talking to me, you know, and basically this is how it happened. We were in a group. It was like, um, one of those author groups and she had posted something or commented something. And I had commented below, like whatever she had said and was like, yeah, I I agree to that or whatever. And then she asked, oh, and then I I asked to be her friend because I thought, well, she's in the same group and we might connect. And then she came right into my inbox and was like, oh, you know, thank you for friend requesting me, blah, blah, blah. And then, but then it was like, question and talking and and at first I was like uh you know how I get like I at first I'm like oh people but then I warmed up and now I'm like oh I really like her you know like because she isn't just trying to get stuff out of me or whatever and but you know your first your first um we because of social media we're so we've learned to put that guard up that that gate you know so when someone comes to that gate if the first thing they fling at you is help me, help me, help me. Then you're like, "Eh, you're staying out of the gate, you know, but it's, if they can get past that gate with a little bit of, you know, you know, trying to be an actual friend, it it works in the long run. And then you have then built a meaningful relationship and with someone that is like-minded or right, similar to you. And now you have another person that's going to support you. And it, and it goes both ways, you know? So anyway, I don't know how I got on that rant, but (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I will say also you, when you first release books, you kind of quickly realize who really has your back mm -hmm. and who really supports you. I was a blogger before I wrote a book and I had a lot of connections and I thought, well, when I release this book, surely, you know, I have all these people that I talk to and all these people that we, you know, talk about books all the time, surely they're going to, you know, take a chance on my book or, you know, at least share. No, no, that's not how it happened. Um, Because the book world can be very petty Mm -hmm. and people can be jealous. People can, um, you know, be turned off that you're doing something other than what you were doing. And I, I very quickly learned who my real friends were and who just, you know, I needed to stay away from. Yeah. I I remember, and I remember you telling me that, like that you were kind of hurt and shocked and I'm like, it's, we've all been there. Like we, I mean, I've lost friends over the years, like because of writing and it's like, um, either because you know who are you to think you can just swoop in and start writing books and doing this or the type of books you write or Mm -hmm. just because it's romance or whatever like it's in either online friendships or even in real life I've lost some friendships it's like kind of like oh well you work too much doing it's like okay you know so you definitely do get to see who you're you know who's really there for you so yeah definitely a learning experience um okay so we totally really steered way off course (laughs) course so okay back to (laughs) what you gain when you when your book is a flop um one of the things that we were talking about was you get to test what works and what doesn't as far as like ads and marketing and all that stuff so 
say for instance, you think, okay, I'm going to do a blog tour. I'm going to sign up. I'm going to get the biggest blog company and they're going to do all this. And maybe you do all that and it still doesn't do anything. And you're like, but it works for so-and-so. Well, we, you don't know all the things, you don't know all their other things that they're doing, all the other components that are going into. And that's what you're learning as a yeah. new author. And not one thing works for every author. There is not two authors in this entire <laughs> author world that do the exact same thing and get the exact same results. Right. There, there isn't. And so when so many people are like, oh, I wish we had a, a checklist of all the things, it really is a trial and error thing. And it's a watch and learn. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's do more of what works and do less of what doesn't and be ready to pivot at all times. Yeah. Um, um, and just cancel something that's not working for you or try something new. Um, so many people swear by ads. I have yet to see success from ads. So I literally cannot do ads. Can I just say really quick, I have not really had success with ads before, but I did an ad for one of my biker book for a birdies biker. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I did to this ad, but I hit some kind of sweet spot where now birdies biker, even though it's it's older. It's not even like the newest book in the series. It's performing better than all of my other books right now. Yay. I have no idea. And, and I wish that I knew what I did so that I could recreate it for all of my books, but I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Right. Ads are like whoo, way above my head, but I just have to pat myself on the back. Real right. Quick and, 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 and I that, did something right. Well, and that right there <laughs> is a learning thing for you. So you're going to pay attention to that ad. You're going to pay attention to the copy and the picture and yeah. the, the, everything that went into that, the amount, the, the duration, all of those things. And even though you, you aren't an ad guru or, uh, or whatever, you're still learning things from that and going, okay, well, when I do my next ad, I'm going to make sure that I say something catchy like this, or use this emoji or, um, use this time frame or uh this segment of people or whatever so you are learning you say yeah. you're not but you are um, it was the first time that i used like a a little blurb not a blurb but just like a little bit of the book mm -hmm. like, like maybe excerpts? three yeah a little excerpt like three paragraphs from the book and that's my copy mm -hmm. and and that was just a tease people needed that tease and yep. It was just enough to get them interested, interested, and that worked. And so, see, that was you learning something, and that was you getting success on a book that you wrote a long time ago. Yeah. And it, you know that book did really well for you, but like, if it was like um one of your flop books, same thing. Like you, years later, it could all of a sudden, you know. Yeah, really nearly well. four years later, conversion still still performs well. Yeah. And so, you have books, you have books, like you'll put out a uh, book spotlight in your newsletter. Mm -hmm. And suddenly that is your best selling book for the month. Yeah. Uh, Even like, though it's old. Right. Apartment to be is the second or third book I published like way back in 2014. Yeah. And I, I put a new cover on it and I put a new cover on the audiobook. I oh. came up with a new blurb. I tweaked the original. I didn't change it too much. Sorry, my dog's barking. Ah, Blue uh, is freaking out. I know she's not up here with me. But and then I um I just basically prettied it up and then I told the story about it in my newsletter about how it came to be and blah, 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 blah. And yes, it shot up. And I was so surprised because it's like it was an old book. I didn't change anything with the book or the story or I mean I anything like it just I just tweaked up how it looked and how it was being presented and reminded the people like hey I got this book and so yeah. many people had no idea and it it shot up and it's got some more reviews on on Amazon so I'm just like wow I'm so proud of myself yeah <laughs> so yeah that's that's definitely something that you know something that and I would consider you know maybe not that book but like I've had a couple that I would consider a flop that came out of the gate and you know didn't make any money but later on down the road they did make money you know because of a TikTok or a post on Facebook or somebody happened to read it and share it or whatever so yeah um so yeah that definitely the testing and stuff always is helpful and you're learning um 
another one was that we had written down was developing your brand. So like all of these authors come out of the gate and they're like, but I don't know what I am or who I am or, you know, what I am. And that is just something that just develops over time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when you first put your book out, you had an idea of what you were going to be or what you were going to write. And it didn't turn out that way. Like you evolved from what you originally thought um, because you, as you started writing your books, you were like finding your voice and um, like who you are. Um, and so I think that's part of the fun and part of the process. And you learn a little bit about yourself through these flops and yeah. through the successes too. And I've written books that are very successful that I think, well, that was fun, but I don't want to write any more books like that. Yeah. It made me good money, but I don't want to, I want to write this really obscure, weird, random thing, you know, yeah. and <laughs> that's going to make me nothing, <laughs> but yeah. like, but that's me learning who I am as a process. Or and it's a, a balance between writing what you know is going to make money and writing, you know, what, what is interesting you at the time. It's like a balance. Right. Which is also on our list, which is uh, finding what brings you joy and what doesn't and doing what you love. So you're, you're basically you know, through these ups and downs and as you release, you're learning, okay, well, I really you know, really enjoy writing male, male romance. Like I'm, I really like it. I'm good at this. Like it's fun. Like I am, my heart is happy when I write this, you know, and then, so then you kind of start putting out more of that content or whatever, and you're growing and evolving and you're, and you're meeting and like readers in that genre and all this stuff. And so it's just, it's hard to explain, but you are growing and fluctuating and, you know. Yeah. Did I set out to be like, known as the motorcycle romance author no (laughs) it's not at all but I found that I freaking love writing death I love writing gore I love writing suspense um and I love you know hard alpha men Mm -hmm. that's that's been my sweet spot for a little while now will that always be that way no probably not but I can still like satisfy those readers and also do, you know, this other thing. And some people will disagree and say that that's wrong and you need to stick with one genre so your readers know what to expect from you. But like you, you have people that only read your MM stuff and you have people that only read your biker stuff and you have people that only read, you know, your taboo stuff. And guess what? all of those people together make this huge crowd of people that will read your books. Right, right. And and so if I, you know, write a, mer- a mermaid romance, it's like, okay, well, that was a flop because it didn't do like, a, you know, one of my taboo romances, but it, it, yeah. it really wasn't a flop or, you know, because it's like, I'm meeting new readers in this area that yeah. I don't really write in or whatever. And so, and then you've got, all of the people that already know and trust and adore you, maybe they didn't run out and go buy that book because it's not normally what they would buy from you, but they keep seeing it pop up on your feed and and they know and trust you as a writer. So they think, "Hmm, maybe I'll try that, you know, and eventually go in there and pop in and get it or, you know, show up at at the book signing and see it on your table. And it's like, okay, well, I have all your other books, but I've never read your mermaid book. Let me grab this one or whatever. And I'll just try it out because I, I like your books or whatever. So it's definitely... Yeah, definitely. You're, 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 that's, yeah, that's, uh, advice that I picked up from you. And I think it's, I think it's amazing. I mean, do what you want, but I think you can write whatever your heart desires and still be successful. (laughs) And I think it also, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of people that have the advice. Like I see in a lot of groups are like, Oh, stay in your own lane or, um, you know, I see that all the time. Yeah. And while I get that, and it's, it's been good for people, especially a lot of people that like are strictly in KU that have like a whole series of whatever, like that's, what's bringing them in the money. And it's like, okay, do you, if that's what you do. But I feel like the reader nowadays is a lot more open. Yes. And diverse and eclectic, like all the different things. They, one day they're reading aliens and the next they're reading MM and the next they're reading cowboys. Like they like romance readers are voracious like it's not like thriller readers where you know they'll they'll pick it up at night and it takes them a little bit like 
romance readers, I've noticed like so voracious. Right. Yeah. And they'll devour it. And, and they're also um, mood readers and impulse readers. And so yeah. if something catches them and they're like, oh, that sounds good. They will download that book right then and start reading it and mm-hmm. tell all their friends about it. And so, you know, that's definitely, if, if it feels like you need to stay in this lane and, and write, then you do you boo, do that. you know, yeah. but if you feel like, Hey, I wrote some, um, you know, you know, sweet contemporary romance, but I'd like to write a dark romance or, Ooh, I'd like to write something taboo or forbidden. You know, it's like, I think that's okay. And as long as you're kind of, you know, steering your readers towards that direction or, or making them aware, like, you know, some people get their readers so trained in a certain way that when they write something different, the readers are like, eh, because you didn't say I just had that experience didn't I there is an author that I read every single one of their books because they are so dark and so intense and so just you know they make my heart pound Mm -hmm. and I picked up one of their books that I hadn't read yet and it was this sad like emotional not dark at all and maybe if I had known that in advance then it would have been okay. But I didn't know that in advance. And so I was like sitting here driving in my car, sobbing over this sad story and like angry. Because you don't normally read that stuff. Yeah. Well, and I I don't like to feel things like that. Right. And I think if you're going to like go out of your lane and you haven't ever been out of your lane before, then you, it could be as simple as putting a little note to the reader in the beginning, like, you know, changing the cover, your cover says so much, but if your cover, if you write dark romance and then you write this sad book in the covers look the same, have the same feel like that's a big no, no to me. Right. And then in like, in, in, again, you could put in there, like, a note to the reader like okay you know I, I know you guys normally expect super dark from me or whatever but today I'm gonna switch it up and really hit you in the feels so be ready grab your tissue yeah. you know, we're gonna get you hard you're still yeah. gonna get the same so and so voice but you're going to you know really get a sucker punch to the heart or whatever and then yeah. they're like okay I'm ready and even with your marketing and social media stuff be like oh we got something new and I did something similar with when I st- took off and basically I wrote dirty ugly toy and that was kind of getting me into the darker side but it wasn't really yeah. that dark compared but then I was going to write this as war baby which I felt like was considerably darker and so I basically started a little campaign for myself that I just did where I put a bunch of um black images and was like Kay Webster's going dark or yeah uh, Hey Webster, it's, it's going to be so dark in here. You're going to need a flashlight. I mean, just, and it was preparing yeah. them for something darker. It was also getting them excited, but it was like, okay, we're doing something new guys. And that is something literally I did. I did a plain black graphic with white writing. I mean, like anybody can do this. You can do this in any kind of app. You don't have, yeah. you, don't have to, you know, and it was just a little bit of preparation, you know, mm-hmm. ready. And so Anyway, these are all things that we learn. I keep steering us off track. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, but this is definitely all the stuff that we are, are learning a- along the way. Um, yeah. What does it say? I have a little note here. I need my eyes checked. Christy was actually taking notes while we were chatting earlier. <laughs> we don't do that. Or actually, no, Christy will take notes, but then she can't read them. Yeah, I can't, I can't read it right now. I'm like, what is this? She has notebooks just full of notes and notes and notes. And then you hand it over to Holly and she's like, what the know, hell like, am I supposed to do with this? I know. I know. I always feel like one day, like, you know, 50 years from now, like someone's, you know, like my great, great grandkids are going to be digging through my stuff in the attic. and going to find like this whole box full of notebooks from grandma. And they're going to be like, is she writing another language what is this language you know because it doesn't make any sense and it's all scribbly and missing letters and like my brain works too fast for my hand yeah yeah that's why I like to type um (laughs) um let's see I had this other one I'm trying to see what this says I just don't take notes and then I'm like wait a minute I had a really good idea what was it can't remember oh well (laughs) I think this says (laughs) 
really can't read this. Is Maybe this, I should take the notes next time. <laughs> this is what it looks like it says. What most calm for table doing? <laughs> okay. Um, but it does say find your niche at the beginning or niche. Um, so like you said, we kind of discussed that, like you were getting into your biker stuff. And like, I kind of feel like of all my books, there's always some kind of mm, taboo element. You know, I yeah. like even the good sweet books are still a taboo, even if, you know, even the most simple contemporary romance, like broken, it's like, it's taboo because he's her boss, you know, like yeah. it's a little bit taboo, not super taboo, but a little bit, you know, I just, I yeah. love those kinds of elements and that's kind of like my thing. And I like the forbidden too. I, I <gasps> love, I love that. Yeah. And so you kind of find like, what's your thing, what's your voice that all goes into the branding and and you're not going to know these things until you start writing your books and yeah. you publishing your books. And so maybe you publish your first book and it's a sweet, almost rom-com. And you're like, well, that was fun, but I really think I would like something darker, you know, and yeah. maybe move on from that. And, and that's okay. I feel like it's okay to pivot and try new things. Um, and I don't think it should be like so set in your ways that you're you don't take that little thing that you know that voice in your head is telling you to do um some people are just so stubborn about things and they just have it in their head that this is how it, it has to be you can't I don't think you can be like that in the publishing industry at all mm -hmm. you have to be well, open and you have and to I, change because everything evolves so fast right and I think that's why like the big publishers and stuff are like you know, they're, they're like the romance indies are, are just running circles around them. Just, yeah, they're getting their asses handed to them right yeah, now. Yeah, because we, we can by ourselves and with our peers and our networking, we can study the market, make decisions and pivot and change and move yeah. and go on to something that's the trend. And, and we study that TikTok like a hawk and we study social media like a hawk and we, you know, we do all this stuff and then we uh, put, we implement it, we put it into motion and we go with flow. Whereas, you know, a lot of these publishers, they've got committees and, and it takes them five years, six what? years to publish a book and that, you know, five years to prepare for this. But by the time that book comes out, right. readers aren't even reading that anymore. Right. And so they, and I feel like they're starting to try to get, you, you'll see a lot of them, they're starting to like do the book talk thing and yeah. trying to do with it. But um, I still feel like, you know, indies are leaps and bounds ahead of them when it comes sure. to, you know, self-marketing and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just, I, I, again, we'll circle back to the beginning. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, even your, even if you put your book out, your very first book and you sold your 12 or 29 copies or whatever you said to your aunts and your uncles and your mom and your sisters or whatever. It was 34. Okay. It was 34. Okay. <laughs> but listen, you wrote a book. Yeah. That was hard. It's Not hard. only did you write the book, but you packaged it and marketed it and, uh, you sold it like you you did all of the things like you wore so many hats you weren't just an author or a writer but you were also a business lady and a marketer and um you just did all of the things to make this happen like you you were being a, a businesswoman doing the yeah. thing you know and it's still an accomplishment so i mean i feel like so many people get so dead set on numbers that they 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 use that as a level of okay if I sold this much or did this much I was a success and if I didn't I was a failure right and it's like no like you wrote a book that's not a failure like if I could go back 20 years and tell myself that I was going to write a single book one day I would have been like really oh my god that is so cool like oh my I can't even imagine it like no way I could write a book like one book and then, you know, then I went on to write a bunch of books. Have the balls to release it because, oh my God, you're putting something that you poured your heart and soul into out mm -hmm. into the public for them to judge. Right. Like yeah. that, that takes a lot of guts. Right. Right. And, and so it's just like, it's all about perspective. And if, 
you're going to be, you know, sad about the way it's, you know, I, I think it's like, it's better to just go in and think, okay, I'm going to get my book out there. And then I'm just going to keep building and keep building and keep building. And then eventually yeah. it's going to grow into this big snowball and I'm going to be a success one day, like financially, if that's your goal. Um, but don't look at it as like, okay, if I don't, you know, make a bazillion dollars on my first book release, I'm a loser and I suck. And because, I'm not going to do it again. Right. Because we didn't, I mean, I was the same boat when I put out my first book, I, you know, barely made back whatever I spent. I, I don't know. I wasn't good with numbers. I didn't keep up with the numbers. So I have nothing to gauge, but I believe that it was Harry there for a little while where I was like, honey, I need more money for editing. And he was like, yeah. you know, I keep giving you money. Why? You know, you know, and I do remember back in the day saying to him, like, guitars are your hobby books are mine. So yeah. I'm not making money right now, but I'm having fun. This is an enjoyment thing for me. So just let me do my thing, you know? And he, and it, and that was back when I was, I didn't have a job. Like I was right. just a stay-at-home mom and I know it's the same for you. Like stay at home mom. We kind of did things here and there to earn extra money, but like, we didn't go to work anymore. That was just our thing. And so, you know, you kind of feel that guilt or whatever, but eventually now look at us. I mean, you're making good money from it after years and years. And that's because you've learn to do whatever works for you personally and art you, what you do and what I do are totally different and they yeah. don't you know like some of the stuff that you do I'm like dang how does she do that and then I'm sure some of the stuff I do you're like how does she do that you know yeah, but yeah. it's just what we <laughs> all the time <laughs> yeah that's how I feel like you do stuff and I'm like dang she did that so good and I feel like that that's everybody's gonna get there eventually if they yeah. you know stay at it or whatever and now I mean you've got all them books behind you you've you know, got a successful like um, social, like a TikTok following, and like like a lot of your business comes from that. And then you've got a great readership, and you're a podcaster. <laughs> the best podcasters in the world, right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you know, and like for me personally, like I'm working very hard to get to the point where I can retire my husband. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if he would have known back when you were asking him for money, yeah, yeah. what would happen? Mm -hmm. He probably would have handed it over a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> well, all I had to do was say, you know, you get guitars and I get books. And he was yeah. like, oh, yeah, she's right. My guitars <laughs> are expensive. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it's just definitely, you know, and there's so many authors. Well, I, and I had seen somebody the other day that said, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I put out book after book, but I don't seem to go anywhere like all these other people do. And I feel like, you know, it's, don't see it that way. Don't look at it that way. Yeah. Just look at it like I'm building, I'm growing. Each time is going to do better and better. Um, because again, you hear that all the time. Comparison is the thief of joy and you don't know what these other people put into it. You don't know if the person who's, you know, number one on Amazon, you know, took out a $50,000 loan for ads, you know, you don't know. And like, yeah. for me personally, I, I'd be caught dead before I did that because I'm so so like low risk when it comes to stuff like that. And some people are like, yeah, I can make this work for me and it's going to happen. And that's what they do. And so you don't know, like you, everybody stands in a different little spot. And so you've got to stop looking at everybody else, unless you're just learning, but then you need to turn it around and figure out, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I'm going to worry about me and what I feel comfortable with and what, you know, you'll find your own success that way. So, and we're both like, it's very rare we meet up on like what we're into at the time, but we're both like super into affirmations right now. Yeah, I know. I know. I was so expecting you to like make fun of me and we're not. It was like, yay. I know you're like, oh, you know, talking about affirmations. And I was like, I downloaded an app. It gives me affirmations like on the hour now. <laughs> Well, I've got an app that I record myself saying the affirmations and then I can oh. play it and it's like on a loop and it plays them all for me. And it's all like, you are a successful woman and you're going to be a millionaire. And I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah. I am. And I hear it in my own voice. I'm like, you go girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But I listen to it really low so nobody can make fun of me at my house. I, <laughs> I swear.
swear it works because I, I battle with depression and sometimes I get like into my lows and I have had a low recently because I've been so sick. And, um, when I started doing the affirmations, I swear to God, my attitude changed. I'm not feeling any better. I'm not healthier, but my attitude is so much better. And this is another like total, I'm taking us out on a tangent, but I swear it works. Yeah, no, I, I a hundred percent agree. And, um, I know like you've been teasing me about my little, you know, woo woo books I'm reading about <laughs> self-help and everything, but they really do. They inspired me. You know, I've, I've, it gets my brain going. It's like, I feel creative again. I feel inspired to take over the world. You know, like yeah. I just, I feel like people need that positive thinking yeah. stuff and, yeah. and those kinds of books and stuff are helpful. And another thing that I just thought of, if people are struggling with, is my book a success or is it not, or what can I do? Or, you know, do go listen to some of those audio books because something about hearing them and hearing them, it motivates you. And maybe it's a business mm -hmm. one. And a lot of these you can get, like, I, I get a bunch of free ones through my audible membership or whatever. And so, um, cause you know, I'm real stingy with my credits and I save them for a rainy day. So I go and, um, I look for all the ones that are free. And so then I go down I don't know why I'm this way, but I do. And then I go down and I look for them and, um, and then I download a bunch of them that are free and then I have options, you know? Yeah. And then a lot of times it'll get me like hooked on an author and then the rest of them aren't free and I got to go buy those, but then that's when I use my credits. But anyway, so people can really just get a lot of information and learn and stuff that it'll help, you know, this whole thing, like help you build your little blocks. And when so, you are so focused on numbers, sometimes it's hard to see all of those other things that are going really well for you. Right. Right. And that goes back to the affirmations. Like you need to, you know, acknowledge like, okay, like, yeah, maybe I didn't make, you know, maybe I made, you know, $200 and I wanted to make 20,000, but I also found this new reader who really connected to my book and she said it reminded her of her son or whatever and now she has hope and that kind of thing really does a lot for inspiring you to write your next book mm -hmm. or um to keep going or whatever so like you said like be grateful for those things that have gone good and that are all just a part of the process of a little puzzle piece in the big grand scheme of it all yeah. that eventually one day 20 years from now you're gonna look back and be like dang look how far I've come you know like mm -hmm. you know I I made you know 200 bucks that first year but now I made you know 200,000 or whatever you know like or maybe it's not about the money maybe it's like I put out 200 books you know like yeah. it didn't make that much money but I put out the, I published 200 books like go me like where's my award I'll make one you know because yeah. I don't know it's it, it's just I just we feel like there's more than officially woo woo people now. I know we are. I have my crystals. Okay. Look. Yeah. <laughs> and this one Lorelai gave me. And then she was mad because I told her it looked like uh, an, an erection. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and now she's like, I'm going to take that away from you. You can't say that. And I was like, you cannot expect a romance author to not have a dirty mind when right. you give her a crystal like that. Right, right. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. <laughs> I have to do over there. I know we're, we're woo woo people now, but yeah, you know yeah. what? We're also um, doing the dang thing. Yeah. And I mean, now we need to talk about what we're reading because. Oh, what are we're, we? Um, we're at our hour. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so cutting us off. No okay. more woo woo talking. No, no more woo woo. Yeah. Except for, I've been reading woo woo books. So technically, oh, yeah, technically we're still still right back into it. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what have you been reading? Okay. So, um, I have not eyeball read any books since we spoke last. Yeah. I've only done audio books, but I've been listening to some um I listened to I think I spoke a little bit about Chillpreneur by Denise Dutfield Thomas um I loved that book like so much that I want to go listen to it again mm. and it's basically how to be a chill entrepreneur 
And so even though like I'm an author, I think of myself as a, like a small business owner. Like, oh, you are. Like, yeah, absolutely. I have like a shop in my house. And like, I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't think of myself as just an author. I think of myself as a businesswoman. So yeah. listening to all this stuff, it really was helpful. Um, and then she has another book. And I, I'll have you know that I think I got one of them free, but I had to pay for the second one with my credits. But it's called Get Rich, Lucky Bitch. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah, and so I listened to that. And then um, I follow her also on um, Facebook now. And she replied to my comment when I oh. said something. And I was like so proud of myself. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure that the person that followed me on TikTok was a fake, but the real person with the blue check mark on Facebook commented. Mm. And so I was really proud of myself because I said, Hey, I pre ordered this book that you have coming out in June, but I really want the audiobook. She's like, It's going to be coming out there too. And I was like, Oh my God. So, anyway, <laughs> and then the other book that I'm reading is called Secrets of Six Figure Women um, by Barbara Stanny. And I'm liking this book, but I think it's like a little dated as far as, I don't know when, I think a lot of her research was like 20 years ago, but yeah. I, it does have some really good stuff. And I, I realized that I want to be a seven figure woman, not a, a six figure woman. Mm. So I need to find some seven figure books because I, you know, go big or go home. Right. There's a lot of six figure ones, but we're looking for, to step it up a little. Right. right. I want to be the, the millionaire girl here. No. Yeah. So those are the ones I'm listening to. And then um, I think, I don't know what I'm gonna read next. So that's all. I'm almost done with that one though. What about you? Okay. Um, so I read, I keep seeing this book all over TikTok, uh, the Mindfuck series. Oh yeah. I, I see uh, it everywhere. And so I read book one. Okay, I'm an idiot. I didn't. I didn't connect the fact that it said mindfuck series uh -oh. that it would be a cliffhanger. So last night I could not sleep. So I read, I read the first book. Um, and I think I will continue on. It's pretty, it's not, I, it's dark, but also like the writing is kind of light, which I kind of think like I do the same thing. Uh -huh. Um, maybe like the, the topic is dark, but my writing is more like light. So, um, I connected with the writing and I like that one. I will read book two. And then I also started seeing, or maybe it was my friend, Diana. I don't remember, but this series, I can't even see it because it's so small. Hold on a second. Uh, Our Thing, an Australian mafia romance and it's kids oh. of the district series. Mm -hmm. Um, and my friend Diana said that there's some pretty interesting kinks in the series. Mm -hmm. So I also read book one of that last night mm -hmm. and I'm so committed. Like I will be reading the rest of this series. I'm into it. Um, so that's what I've been eyeball reading. I haven't, it's hard for me to eyeball read these days, but last night I was just on a kick. I woke up at three o'clock, messaged you with my weird dream. Mm -hmm. And then I took a Benadryl because my allergies are bugging me and flew through two books after that. Uh, <laughs> did I talk about Kylie Scott at our last podcast? Oh, I think so. You said you were rereading her uh, yeah. Rockstar books. Stage Dive series. Mm -hmm. oh, gosh, so I, finished, I finished all four books. And I'm on so audio? Yeah. I'm so in love with this series. Uh, sometimes I forget about books that I've listened to in the past. I have 1,575 audiobooks. Oh and my I have, gosh. I have listened to every single one of them. Like there are none that I have not listened to. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's easy for me to forget, you know, when you go through as many as I do. Mm -hmm. um, so when I saw her on TikTok, I was so happy to relive this series. It was freaking amazing. And I never want to leave that world. Um, and then I didn't know what to listen to after that because nothing was like meeting that same feeling that I got from that series. But I listened to Not Pretending Anymore by Penelope Ward and by Keelan. Their books are like my palate cleansers because they are so funny and so sexy and like they are so tropey mm -hmm. and I just love it. 
So I listened to that one. And now I am on to Merciless Vows by, hold on a second, um, Faith Summers, because I wanted like something dark and this is a, a mafia type book. Yeah. So that, and it's a series, which oh. I kind of like because I don't like to think about what I'm going to listen to next. I want to yeah. like know. So I go for series when I do. Oh, well, I try to buy several so that I have options because I, there's well, nothing smart not having a book when you're about to get in the car. Yeah. And I'm and like, like, I can't, I can't leave my driveway until I have something. I know. And then they don't let you like order your books to the app. So I have to like get on my yeah. desktop and be all complicated. And <laughs> don't you just use your browser on your phone? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I am old. <laughs> okay. And I have an eye doctor's appointment, but my eyes are getting so bad now. I can barely see on this little phone. Do you know and you can make it bigger? No. But a lot of this, I can't even see. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, I, if I get on a computer, I can see it. Plus I like to, um, I feel like it's easier to navigate when I'm on the computer because I can see all the things I can see the, um, hmm. what else I might like. And a lot yeah, of times they the give suggestions, ideas. right. And then I can filter through those. I can go back. I can, I just feel like I can ma- like navigate better and, and really get a good idea, but you're so old. I know. And then I put such an old lady thing to say. (laughs) And I put something on my wish list and I don't even know how to find my, oh, there it is. Wish list. (laughs) I was like, the three lines and then it has your wish list and everything. I have 26 books on my wish list and I, I need to buy these. Wow. The next, the first, the one I want to read next is called rich as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Who's that one by? That one is by Amanda Francis and she's in the and the book picture is really cute because she's sitting in the bathtub and she's got money all in the bathtub and she's got her little wine glass she looks sassy oh, that's cute I can't see it but it's, it's oh yeah that's cute it's got like all five stars and 388 um reviews so wow or it looks like all five stars but it, it obviously the ratings are really good on it so I'm excited that's awesome yeah, you preserve your credits and I just I just buy more. Yeah. After I'm done, I'm like, this is never ending for me. I don't even want to. I thought the other day about taking the average price. Cause like if I buy three credits at a time, they're $9.95. So I I started typing in 1575 times 9.95 which would be pretty easy if I think about it because it's almost 10, but we're not going to talk about it because that is a lot of money. What is it? it what is it? 13,000 uh, or something? It's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. It's like 15, $15,000. Dang. Which is, isn't completely accurate because I get the yearly membership, which drops it down in price. And some of them I buy on whisper sync because that drops down the price too but still it's a lot of why audiobooks are so they're expensive to make and they're expensive to buy but I love them with my whole heart I'm starting to totally be there but it's funny that we are totally different audiobook listeners like yeah I just listen to totally different stuff than you it's so weird remember when um you were just trying to figure out how to buy your own audiobook and it like took a week and a half <laughs> mm-hmm. I couldn't figure out how to buy my own audiobook because <laughs> I mean me doing like screenshots and walking you through it and it still took it took so long yeah. you were you look at you so old and then I actually was able to help my mother-in-law put the audible app on her phone so she could listen to her audiobooks and I felt nice. like I was stepping up in the world <laughs> Like this seems so proud. <laughs> so funny. All right. That was our show. Yeah. So I will what I'll do like I did last time. I will make a little blog post and put the highlights on there and put all the links in there because I felt like people liked to go and peek at that. And then yeah, for people who are visual, they can watch the YouTube video and again mm-hmm. subscribe. Um because yeah. we have 69 we- subscribers on. <laughs> on if YouTube. Go, if we get to a thousand, we can go live over there. So y'all got some work to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, and we do like to hear your comment. Uh, I was really proud of myself because I commented on our, our last podcast or, you know, on the YouTube. Yeah. Was, you know, um, but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like this is really helpful information and I feel like this could be helpful for not just new authors or want to be authors, but like seasoned authors too. Like mm -hmm. you just need to um, be reminded of why you're here and what you're doing and what you're yeah. learning so exactly yeah so hopefully we help <laughs> well we don't know what next episode will be about but it'll be something amazing i promise you and uh we will be back in two weeks all right bye bye everybody